Hello everyone, and welcome back here to Comic Vantage, and today we have one of my favorite episodes that I love to do, and that is a 100 comic book mystery box from eBay. That is right, we have 100 comic books in here. No idea what they are, but these have been so much fun. Uh, and it's also been probably one of my most watched videos ever, all the videos that I do uh, in this series. Everybody absolutely loves them, and, you know, they have a blast with them. One of the big questions I always get, though, is everybody asks me, you know, they didn't think mystery boxes are allowed on eBay. Mystery boxes are not allowed on eBay. They will get pulled if you put them on there. Actually, let me straighten my camera out here a little bit, guys. All right. Uh, because eBay considers it gambling. You can't say you have a chance to win this book or, you know, a one in five chance to win this book. Um, but what you can call it is a random comic lot. And that way there's no guarantee of what's in here. You can't say you have a chance of winning a big book. You just say there's a hundred comic books in here. Have at it. That's it. So that's what they do. And I mean, most of the time on eBay, you're not going to you know, win a million dollars on eBay off of a box of comics. Uh, usually these are, you know, pretty cheap, inexpensive books. I have gotten some really fun ones, though, and a few that are a little bit higher priced. I don't think I've ever gotten anything over 20 bucks though, in one of these boxes. But they are so much fun. Everybody has a blast. I'm going to shut up now and get to opening this. First up, coffee. It gets early in the morning. Hmm. I always shoot these videos first thing. So that way I can put them up and everybody has the day to enjoy them. Especially when I put them up on a Friday. and Everybody has the weekend. Yeah, it's funny. One of the other videos that I got, you know, this is the box they come in. It's like the person didn't even bother to watch past the first three minutes of the video before they commented. And they're like, how can you leave the box there the whole time? We can't see anything moving. We want to see... Dude, I'm only opening the box. <laughs> and then I'm going to move it to show you the book. Jeez. All right. So here's the part where I move the box. Okay. Oh, styrofoam peanuts. My bane of... My existence! Raw. Alright. We got a stack. Also, these videos are usually pretty long. They're usually about 45 minutes. So you gotta stay and watch the whole thing, or else you might miss a book. <laughs> Alright, there's that. Whew. That was annoying. Okay. All right, here's our stacks. They actually number them one, two, three, and four. Each one has like 25 comics in it. So, you know, let's start at the beginning. There's four, three, two, one. All right, I'll pop that there. Because everybody's going to want to see the books. The other thing is, is that these comics do not come with bags and boards. You will have to bag and board them yourself. Actually, a majority will not come with bags and boards. Oh, that's what it looks like all these might. But even if they do, they are usually so old that uh, they're not worth keeping on there. All right, well, we saw the first one here, so I'm just going to pop that out right away. And that's actually very cool. Batch Girl, issue number 32 from the New 52. Hey, now I can straighten that out and we can see what's going on here. I'm going to put my coffee back in the... Because, you know, sponsored by coffee. Versus Burnside. Oh, it's Batgirl of the Burnside. But they said, bro, oh, versus. I get it. All right. Next up. Hey, Savage Dragon number 66. I love Savage Dragon. Such a great comic book. Long-running comic book. Celebrating over 300 issues now. Love 90s comics. That's the other thing about this, uh, this comic lot that I buy in particular. Which uh, I will leave in a description, in a comment in the description, or I will leave a link in the description below so everybody can take a look for themselves. They, uh, hell, anything from like, I think I got a couple like comic books from the 1950s last time around, all the way up through modern age stuff. Warlock and the Infinity Watch. We got some good old Thanos and Galactus there happening, coming after Gamora. Beautiful. It's a great looking book there. And what is this? Oh, Dark Horse Comics number eight, introducing X. Look at that. That's really... Is that the first appearance of X? That is very possible. All right, guys. I need to do some research. I'm going to cut. Be right back. All right. Yep. Like I thought, this is the first appearance of X. This is a about a $10 comic. So that's rather surprising. See? What did I tell you? 
Never anything over 20 bucks though, but that's still a lot of fun. What a great way to start this box off. Hmm. I'm going to keep it back there because I actually might keep that book. A lot of these books will actually show up in my mystery boxes as sort of filler books. What is this? Engine head. Hmm. Awesome. Very interesting. I like that. Engine head number six from DC Comics. Hey, that's a newer book. Avengers Fantastic Four Empire number four. <clears throat> Man, I really liked the She-Hulk during this time. She really just hulked out. I love that. Mankind, the story of all us kind from the History Channel. <laughs> Silver Dragon Comics, issue number zero. Oh, that's funny. I had no idea. Written by Marv Wolfman. Oh, that's hilarious. Artwork by Bill Sienkiewicz. Okay, that's interesting. I have, I mean, that's two big names right there. Doing art and writing on this book. I have never heard of this before. And apparently they did it all for the History Channel. <laughs> oh, hey, Wetworks, issue number 10. Man, I love Wetworks comics. Oh, this was 90s right here. Wetworks was an absolutely amazing series. I would love to see this continue on. Beautiful. Oh, I love that. Wetworks issue number 11, again coming at us. So cool. These are two books I don't have in my collection, so I can throw them in there now. And then Wetworks number four. Man, that's beautiful. Oh, I see a trading card. Uh, man, I'm having some 90s nostalgia flashbacks here. I remember picking these up on the... Oh, it is a new stand. Okay, that's shocking. Now, I've talked about newsstand issues before. and During the 90s, newsstand comics really didn't mean much. Everybody all nowadays, oh, newsstand, newsstand. You know, with 90s comics, newsstands don't mean squat unless it's Image Comics. Uh, because everything from DC and Marvel was 50-50 newsstand and direct. So there really was no more, there wasn't one more rare than the other. But when it came to Image Comics, less than 5% of the issues were newsstand. Because places like 7-Eleven and your local grocery store didn't want to take, take a chance on an unknown comic company. All right. Oh, Wildcats, issue number four. Okay, oh, this is really turning out to be a blast today. <laughs> this is Jim Lee. Always love this cover. It is sealed with the trading card of Zealot and Grifter. Look at that. So cool. All right, I'm just going to keep stacking. These are the ones I'm keeping, by the way. <laughs> I'm just going to pop them on back there. Look at that. Uh, maybe i got to put you over here. Do I? Yes. All right. Well, it's still behind coffee, but... All right, let's see what else we got. Hey, Union, issue number one, and Wildcats Adventure, issue number five. These all stuck together, so I'll just pop them up. Wildcats Adventure, of course, was the comic book series that was based off of the cartoon series back in the 90s. A lot of people probably don't realize there was a Wildcats cartoon series back in the 90s. That's funny, because Rob Liefeld will tell you a story about how he was approached first by the network to do a young blood uh, cartoon series and he turned it down because he didn't feel it was right and then jim lee jumped on it and got all excited and happy and then it ended up being crap and he's like i told you so you know rob i felt a tool but hey what can you do what works issue number six i was love this cover man this 90 stack is just amazing i absolutely love this, this is so cool now, I've never noticed this before, but if you look really close, you got a pair of platform boots over here that belong to Gene Simmons from Kiss. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. I love that. Why have I never noticed that before? That is so cool. Now, I'm really staring at this cover to look for different things. I'm going to keep that handy so I can take a look at it a little bit harder and longer. All right, Team One Stormwatch, issue number one. Man, I should have opened this box last, because this is all kinds of 90s nostalgia, and I'm afraid the rest of these aren't going to live up to that. Maybe I'll open one of the other boxes first. You know what? Let's do that. You know, I'm just going to 
cracking the stack number two here because this is way too much fun people the 90s are my era of comics oh that's when i really really got into the comic collecting was in the 90s oh look at this transformers number two from dw now that's an awesome book as well wow yeah this has turned out to be really cool I'm having so much fun here. I hope you guys are having fun with this too. It's like Christmas when you get one of these boxes. Impulse goes ape. Issue number three. Because, you know, ape. Get it? All right. What else do we got? Morning Glories. Issue number 14 from Image Comics. Aha. Uh -huh. Teen Titans. Who is Wonder Dog? Issue number 62. Oh. Oh, I see Chromium. Oh, man. Oh, come on. No. Profit. Issue number one. The Stephen Platt book. Oh, Chromium wraparound cover. Oh, sweet. God, look at this. Chromium covers are my absolute favorite you top that off with Steven Platt artwork, and you've got yourself an amazing, an amazing combo right here. Oh, God, so good. This right here. Everybody in the 90s stood up and took a look at Steven Platt. Wow. Oh, I wish I had pulled this book last. Man, I am just going to, you know what, you're just going to go right there, right in the middle. I'm going to, I don't even care what I cover up. <laughs> oh, remember? I was talking about early books. Look at this. Richie Rich in Bank Books. Issue number, I don't even know, number 27. What year did this come out of? Do we even know? 1977 on this one. And some more Richie Rich Collector's Comics, issue number nine, coming out of Harvey World. So cool. It's funny because a lot of these books will, like I said, they'll end up as filler in my mystery boxes. So anybody that buys my mystery boxes might end up seeing a few of these. Too cool. Look at that. Giant 68 page episode. Richie Rich Zillions. Now that's what I call big money. Get it? Because it's bigger than he is. Oh, I get it. G.I. Joe. Issue number three of four from Dark Horse. When did Dark Horse have the G.I. Joe license? Interesting. I had no idea. Actually, what's even more shocking is that... Uh, Larry Hama isn't writing. Although this is a Walt Simonson cover. Interesting. That's very cool. I dig that. Let's see. Hey, back to Vulcan. Star Trek issue number 36. That's got to be a book probably in the 80s as well. Yep, March of 87. I was right on that one. Next up. Suicide Squad, Beyond Betrayed by their one of their own. Issue number four from the New 52. Some Teen Titans, issue number 65. Family Feud, Wonder Girl vs. Lycus. <laughs> I love the old Gap commercial. Oh, the days of a mall. Aquaman, Until Death Do Us Part, issue number 41. Devil Jack, issue number one. I have never seen or heard of that book ever from Tim Tyler from 1995. Maybe I should just go on a mission and collect every single 90s comic book I could possibly get my hand on. That would be an amazing collection, wouldn't it, people? Just everything from the 90s. And this is from 1995. So you know what? That's going to go a little, little side right there. Next up. Wetworks issue number seven. Beautiful. Man, Wetworks was so much fun. Just 
Wildcats, issue number 18 from the 90s. Man, that's a beautiful cover. Oh, is that voodoo on the cover? Sure is. Oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Wildstorm Rising, Barry Windsor Smith cover. Barry Windsor Smith is one of my favorite artists of all time. I absolutely love this guy. Uh, to me, he drew the quintessential Wolverine when he did the Weapon X story in Marvel Comics Presents. That was my first, you know, little series of books I ever remember hunting down. I wanted the entire Weapon X storyline, and I did back the day when I was a kid. I wanted them all. I found them at a flea market for like a buck a piece or whatever it was. So cool. Been a fan of Barry Windsor Smith ever since. Come on here. How are you doing, you? Okay. Warrior Nun Ariella, issue number three. That's a blast from the past as well. Another 90s comics from 95. Oh, I was about a year out of high school. <laughs> Started working in the restaurant biz. Had my own money, was buying comic books. It was a good time. Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, The Sith War, issue number two of six. That's a really cool cover. I dig that. <laughs> My eye still keeps being drawn to this chromium cover back here the entire time. Maybe I'll move it because of the distraction. All right. <laughs> Mike Spillaney's Mike Danger from Techno Comics. Wasn't this the company that William Shatner backed back in the day? I bet it was. Mike Spillaney's Mike Danger. So cool. Yeah. Also out of the 90s, another defunct comic company from 1995. That was a good time to be a comic collector. So much fun. A lot of people think the 90s ruined comics, but I don't think so. Oh, wow. What is this? Amazing Spider-Man number 49. Chris Bacciolo variant cover, it says. I think got a $10 price tag on this book. I wonder how true that is. Doesn't matter. Man. Chris Bacciolo's artwork. Man, I love it. I've been a fan of his for forever. I think I bought Generation X back in the 90s specifically just for his artwork. I loved it so much. Mmm. Don't know how true the $10 price tag is, but if anyone out there can let me know, go ahead and do that. Let's see what else we got here. Spider-Man and the Beast. Marvel team-up. I got a $2 price tag on that, I think. I'm not even sure. From 1979. Look at that. Good old Blue Beast back here. Web of Spider-Man. That's a... It's like, why do they have a Mylar on that with a ten, twelve dollar price tag? What is going on with these books? You know what, guys? I'm gonna take a quick cut and I'm gonna look and see what's up. All right, so yeah, both these books right here, all over eBay, ten dollar price tags. It's pretty much what they're selling for. That is really cool. I can't believe they put a Mylar on this one though. I'm gonna have to replace that because I can get this price tag off. But hey. I will stick this in my mystery box for as a $10 book. Nice. Oh, well. That's really cool. I'm going to put these to the side. So uh, This one, though, I haven't found anything on yet. I said I just kind of stopped after the other two, and I figured, meh, I'll look at it later. Didn't want to keep you guys waiting, you know what I'm saying? Okay, what else do we got? Man, we're having some fun today, people. This is really cool. We got some Teen Titans. Who is Omen? Does anybody care? Oh, all right. Let's open the next stack. Oh, this is so cool today. World's greatest comic magazine. Is it really, though? Is it really? Oh, it's Fantastic Four. Yeah, no. We're done with that. I was done with that the minute I saw it. All right. Nomad issue number five. She's mine. Dead man's hand with the Punisher. Woo. Quantum and Woody from Valiant Comics issue number four. I love Quantum and Woody. 
Looks like if I can get that off of there. Self-sealing bag. I hate self-sealing bags. Don't tell me how to tape my bag. All right. Guardians of the Globe. Oh, Guarding the Globe. Issue number two from Image. I have never heard of this book. Never. Not once. No clue. All right, then. Off to the next. From Dynamite Comics, A Train Called Love for Mature Readers. <laughs> that looks supremely weird. But hey, it's dynamite. What can you do? All right. Beautiful. Rocket Girl, issue number six. Coming at us from Image Comics. Rocket Girl. All right. The original badass from Dynamite Comics, issue number three. As we all know, this is a Rob Liefeld homage cover. Look at that. Never seen that before. Ah, uh -huh. self-sealing. I hate them, but might as well use it. Don't want to waste a bag. That's actually really cool. I think that's going to make a lot of fun in my mystery boxes. If I don't decide to give it away first. I know somebody that likes collecting these Rob Liefeld homage covers. That's really neat. I'm going to put that to the side. Maybe I'll ask him if he wants it. The Others, issue number one from Image Comics. That is very 90s. With the artwork and the coloring. That is so 90s. I don't even know if it can get any more 90s. Issue, issue one from 1994. That's cool. I'll have to read that. Turok, Dinosaur Hunter. Should we got now? We got Valiant going on? Oh, so cool. I heard Turok's making a comeback in a new comic series. That'd be fun to see. More Turok. Rags Morales. Issue number 26. I always really enjoyed the coloring in Valiant. I really felt like they were the first company to sort of push the coloring issue. Uh, using alcohol markers and watercolors. And then everybody else, and that looks like an airbrush. And then everybody else started kind of chiming in and started upping their color game, and they started introducing computer colors. Oh, God, the 90s were awful for computer colors when it first started. People started coloring things in weird places that just because they could. <laughs> Some of those comics, oh, they were so badly covered. More Archer and Armstrong. Again, Barry Windsor Smith. So cool. Berg, issue number one from Lightning Comics. Now that's a blast. Oh my god, this is a glow-in-the-dark cover? That is so gimmicky 90s. I love 90s gimmick comics. If you guys haven't watched it, I put out a my top 10 uh, favorite gimmicks of the 90s for the covers. You should go watch that because that ties directly to this, right? Oh, I'm keeping this. <laughs> that is mine right there. Ah, oh, so good. Oh, why are you stuck there? That's okay. It's only Starman from the Underworld. What else we got here? Stop sticking together. Black Lightning. No mercy for Gangbuster. Hey, some Brigade coming at us from Image Comics, issue number 17. The New Order begins here. Rawr. Gen 13, issue number four, some J. Scott Campbell goodness. Everybody loves J. Scott Campbell. Very cool. Let's see what else we got. Shadow Man. A lot of Valiant coming at us today. We never see any. You know, I want to box of Ultraverse comics. I want to see Malibu books. I haven't seen any pop up yet in these comics, I, in these boxes, I don't think. Number 20. And now Ryan the Future Force, issue number 14. A lot of Valiant. So cool. I think Stevie B would be really happy with all these Valiant books. Unity. This is not absolute. Eternal Warrior, issue number 2. Harbinger, issue number 10, more Valiant, more Gen 13, wow. oh, this is Gen 13 preview book, 
with the Jim Lee cover. What? October 1997, Gen 13 Preview, first printing. I have never seen this book, people. Anybody out there seen this book before? Wow. Um, I'm going to go look this up real quick. I'll be back. All right. So, shockingly, this book sells for about $20. Actually, sells for $20 on eBay. I said this that's probably the most or the most expensive book I've ever pulled from one of these mystery boxes. I actually got Ghostbumps. I have never seen this book before. There's only about three or four on eBay, and they're priced around $30, but it sells for about $20. I am thoroughly in shock. This is amazing. This has been such a great stack of books. I'm so excited. <laughs> this has probably been one of my better eBay mystery box pulls. This is amazing. I can't believe it. Mm. All right, let's keep going. I still got at least 30 books left. So we got Grifter issue number one from DC. I don't think anything's going to top that. I mean, look at this selection. I don't even know what's happening right now. Incredible Hulk number 328. The 20th anniversary of the Incredible Hulk. Look at that. From 1986. Wow. Oh, this book is trashed. But hey, it's the New Warriors. Issue number two. Trash. All the Mark Bagley artwork. 2099 Unlimited. Featuring Hulk 2099 and Spider-Man 2099. That's really cool. I dig that a lot. I loved these 2099 books back in the day. Oh, look at this. Oh, I got two books stuck together. First, more Wildcats Adventures. Issue number seven. Mike Waringo artwork. And then, Young Blood Strike File number eight with the Stephen Platt cover. You know, back in the day, you put Stephen Platt's artwork on any kind of cover, the book was going to sell a million copies. People did that on purpose just to sell their books. I mean, look at that. Oh, man. Absolutely beautiful. Unbelievably beautiful. You know, I think I might keep that one. I think I need to. I, I, I don't even... I, this is like the most I've ever kept. Oh, Wildstar, issue number one. Talk about gimmick covers. We got embossed. We got foil. We got cardstock. It's all happening right here. <laughs> all right. Oh. Okay, let's see. What's up next? Superman in Action Comics, number 693. But it's Superman, so we don't care. Solar, the Man of the Atom, issue number 31. Eternal Warrior, number 14. More Eternal Warrior, issue number 13 this time. With Eternal Enemy. More Eternal Warrior. Issue number 12. Look at that. Bart Mania. Eternal Harbinger. Number 2. Why did they put that in one of those Mylar sleeves from back in the day? Silver Age Ultra Pro. I used to hate these because the little strap always gave loose and broke. And then they would get brittle and crack. Kind of like it's doing here right now. Ugh. Terrible. Alright. Still, cool book though. We got more Harbinger, issue number 20. Serial number contest details inside. Looks like Spider-Man, but it's not. <laughs> more Harbinger, issue number 19. And then we got Harbinger, issue number 18. We got a lot of Harbinger going on. Looks like they pulled from the Valiant box this time around. Hardcore, issue number 13. And then Valiant, Time Walker, issue number 12. Never heard of Time Walker from Valiant. Hey, another original badass. That's really cool. So now we got two. I will give one to my buddy. 
more Quantum and Woody. <clears throat> the First Hero from Action Lab, issue number one of four. Action Lab's actually been printing out some pretty good books. All right, let's see. Next up, Solar, the Man of the Atom. Joe Quesada and Bob Layton on that cover. Bob Layton was working at Valiant at this time, doing Exo Man of War for them. Beautiful. Next up, the Hardcore, issue number 15, Busted. See, because they're behind bars, they got busted. Control, issue number one of six from Dynamite for Mature Readers. Or you know, this book's a little pretty, pretty beat. But hey, it's still a Predator book. Xenogenesis. Earth fights back. Raw. Because Earth is fighting back. Oh, look at this. That's an awesome back cover. That takes me back. 1989, it says. The old dungeon board game. Uh, back before Stranger Things and Baldur's Gate and the Dungeons and Dragons movies, we had Dungeon, the board game, which was supposed to get kids into playing Dungeons and Dragons, made by TSR. And the book is Quasar, number 16, or Quasar. But no one cares because the back cover was the star. Bone issue number three from Image Comics. If it's Image, that means it's the reprint. What else we got? Tales of Fear, Agent, issue number one shot. Eh, three full, 31 full pages of story. 12 steps in one. What else we got here? Iron Man, The Choice. Issue number 204. We got some Iron Man number tissue, or tissue, yeah, I can't say it. Issue number 208. If Iron Man can cast these missiles, it's the death of a nation. Man, these were so much fun back then. Denny O'Neill, the writer. That's a great cover, or a great interior shot. I like that. What else we got? Hey, we got more Iron Man right here. Release Iron Man, Spy Master, or face the fury of Happy Hogan. That's right, Happy Hogan. That's cool. Sam De La Rosa is the anchor. What else we got here? We got some Batman Detective Comics Contagion number two. So six ninety five. Scott Hanna. About this time. Uh, Scott Hanna was inking over here for a lot of these. He, uh, I met him at a really small con in Reading, Pennsylvania. Like, first little con I've ever been to. It must have been about, oh geez, 1995, I think it was. And it was just coming off the Batman Spider Man uh, crossover that had happened. And he was there and he was signing books and stuff. And he actually did two head sketches for me one of Spider Man and one of Batman. He was such a cool guy. Then I met him years later. And uh, told him how that story left an impression on me. And uh, he thought it was so cool. He was a really great guy. All right, what else do we got? Hero Holiday Special Bone Premiere Edition by Jeff Smith. I've never seen this before. Of course, this came from the Hero Magazine because the Hero logo up there. It's probably worth a buck or two. Who knows? Back then, Bone was a really big deal. Oh, what else have we got here? Hey, we're getting back to some more image stuff. Union number six, guest starring Fairchild. 90s image comics. What else we got? Oh, Transformers Armada issue number two from Dreamwave. I've never read any of the Transformers Dreamwave books. I'd like to. Hey, Nexus issue number 45 from First Comics from 1998. Or 1988, sorry. Wow, that's really cool. old Steve Rude is the artist. Nice. I like that. Wow. The official movie adaption of The Mask, issue number one. That's really cool. I've never seen this either. Ah, that's going to be fun to put in my mystery box. Only a few books left to go, people. We're coming to the end. Danger Unlimited, plus The Torch of Liberty, number four. This book has definitely seen better days. I love this. This means it's been sitting out in the sun and the entire top of the book just disintegrated the bag. I've seen that before at like flea markets. 
All right, Grendel Tales. Four Devils, one hell. Issue number three of six. Not suitable for children. Grendel. So cool. Grendel's a great read all the way around. The Phoenix Resurrection Revelations. What was I just saying? That I wanted some Ultraverse books. This is after Marvel bought the Malibu comics, as you can see, because we have Wolverine going on here. This is probably a wraparound cover. It looks it to me. It's sad that Marvel bought this company and then did nothing with it. Yep, totally. Wraparound. We got Prime, we got Rogue, Juggernaut, Ghoul, Black Knight, Jubilee. Wow, look at that. So cool. And then they let the trademarks lapse. Uh, you can actually just go and register the trademarks for Prime and Ultra Force and all that kind of good stuff. Hard case. The only thing you can't trademark right now is Ultra Verse because some dude already trademarked it for a board game. Yeah. Well, there we go. That's actually kind of fun. I'm definitely going to read this. This is going to go in my collection. Just pop you there. And the last book King Shark. <laughs> Well, you know, it could be a complete high note to go out on. But, man, do we look at all the greatness that we got. I mean, look at this. Look at that chromium cover. Look at this Gen 13 preview book. I've never seen this before. I can't believe it. This is just... After, this, is, this box has blown me away above and beyond. Absolutely amazing. So much fun. I really hope you guys had some fun with this as well. If you're new to the channel, make sure you sub me up right there. Hit the little CV. So that way you can get all these cool stuff as they come out. And uh, if you're not new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. And I will do another one of these soon because, man, this was fun. Uh, like I said, I really hope you guys had as much fun as I did. And like always, guys, thank you so much for watching and take it easy.